A virtual tie less than a week away from Pennsylvania's Democratic primary. An anti-incumbent fever has really evaporated Senator Arlen Specter's once prohibitive 21-point lead over challenger Joe Sestak. Today's Quinnipiac University poll shows that the Democrats are divided 44% for Specter, 42% for Sestak, certainly within the margin of error. Democratic Senator Arlen Specter now joins us live from Capitol Hill. Senator, uh, this is a lot tighter than anyone ever thought it would be. What do you think is going on here? Are you having a a hard time selling yourself to Democrats as a newly converted Democrat. Well, Andrea, when uh, my opponent spends a million and a half dollars on television last week, you can expect him to go up in the polls. Uh, I am uh, being rece received by the Democrats very favorably. Uh, the Democratic uh, State Committee endorsed me overwhelmingly. Uh, the President of the United States is doing a dynamite television message for me. Uh, Joe Biden, whom I rode the train with for the better part of three decades and knows me inside out, says that I have supported democratic values. Look here, in my tenure in the Senate, uh, I've been independent, but voting perhaps more often with Democrats on the big issues than Republicans. I support a woman's right to choose. I led the fight against more, uh, against warrantless wiretappings, against uh, Guantanamo in favor of raising the minimum wage. So uh, uh, I have been uh, well received by the Democrats. Well, you mentioned a woman's rights to choose. The National Abortion uh, Rights Committee has now endorsed Joe Sestak. Uh, this just in from the AP says that the Political Action Committee of NARAL is now endorsing Sestak over you. Is that a big setback? Andrea, that's not news. That uh, was uh, done months ago. They gave me a 90% rating. Uh, uh, but uh, my record uh, for women's issues is very, very strong. Supported the, uh, the Ledbetter case, uh, uh, raises for women, hiring women on my staff. Uh, very, very strong with the women's vote. Yes, in, the polls, in the polls, I'm leading in very decisively with the women. Does the nomination of Elena Kagan put you on the spot? You've had a number of uh, uh, interesting moments, we should say, the Bork hearings, the Clarence Thomas hearings, in confirmation of many of these Supreme Court justices. Here you've got someone you voted against for Solicitor General, and you're in a Democratic primary this time, not as a Republican, trying to persuade Democrats you're a true blue Democrat, but you voted against someone who was so close to the president. He was, you know, the solicitor, she was solicitor general in the president's own inner circle, and now his nominee for the Supreme Court. You're going to have to defend that vote against Kagan? Well, she's not closer to the president than I am. He's endorsed me for this seat, but dealing with the issue directly, uh, a Supreme Court nominee doesn't have to answer questions, in fact shouldn't, as a matter of judicial independence. When she was up for Solicitor General, and I put all of this in detail in the record, uh, I wanted to know what she would do on urging the Supreme Court to take the case of the Holocaust victims against an insurance company, or what he would, she would do with uh, the survivors of the victims of 9-11, where uh, the uh, State Department didn't want the Supreme Court to hear the case because of their relationship with Saudi Arabia. And the Congress had said that uh, sovereign immunity was not a defense. And when she declined to answer those questions, I thought she should have. But as I said on the Supreme Court, uh, I've got an open mind. Expect to talk to her tomorrow morning, and uh, I'll be available to tell you what my thinking is. Now, the president, of course, uh, very memorably did not go to Massachusetts, did not campaign against Senator Brown, and uh, we know what happened there. Uh, is there any effort, aside from the commercials that he's done for you, to bring the president in at the last moment and try to turn this around and, and guarantee that you will beat your challenger? Andrea, I'm bringing him in practically on uh, on every moment. If you but turn a on MSNBC, a, a, you know, a rally, a big Philadelphia rally on Monday wouldn't hurt, would it? Well, uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt, but he's a busy guy. He's busy with Karzai. He's busy with an oil spill. Well, is he, and, uh, is he trying to avoid finish. being tied to someone who he's not sure is going to win? <laughs> How, how can you even ask that question seriously, Andrea? Well, he's all over radio. Might make a he's, 
What about Joe Biden? He was planning to be there. I know he's got, of course, the problem with Bo. Was he planning to test to appear for you this week? Well, he came in uh, a few days ago to uh, Scranton, but he's doing a lot of interviews and he's speaking up. Uh, uh, let me tell you something you might not know. Uh, it costs about uh, eighteen thousand dollars to bring uh, uh, somebody in on Air Force Two. But uh, if your real thrust of your question are these people for me doing everything they can, the answer is absolutely yes. You refer to the, the campaign ad, the Sestak campaign ad. Let me show a little bit of, of it because it features you and George W. Bush. Uh, is that the ad that you think has been so, dominating, so uh, devastating in the polls? Let's watch. For 45 years, Arlen Specter has been a Republican politician. Arlen Specter is the right man for the United States Senate. I can count on this man. See, that's important. He's a firm ally. But now, my change in party will enable me to be re-elected. Arlen Specter switched parties to save one job. His. Is, is it hard to, to make the sale, Senator, when you've been a Republican for so many decades? And now, most recently, last night again in Allegheny County, you said, I thank the Allegheny Republican Committee for endorsing me for the Democratic nomination. And then, great pleasure to be endorsed by the Allegheny County Republicans. Together we'll win for victory. A slip, there was a similar slip those months back. Does that make it harder to say you're a true blue, uh, although newly minted Democrat? Well, listen, when you rush out of the Senate, uh, out of your vote and hop on a jet, uh, you may misspeak. I'm not as uh, professional as you are, Andrea, as a, as a TV personality. But let me let me get to the real point. Let's go back to my vote on the stimulus. At that time, if I had voted with the Republican caucus and voted against the stimulus, and Toomey had said he was going to run for governor. Toomey, the uh, had, Republican, uh, likely. Republican opponent. Whoever he, wins he, he's going to be the Republican nominee in the fall, but he was out of the primary. So I had a clear shot at the nomination and a clear shot at being elected in an off year with the party out of power uh, being in the dominant position. And as a matter of principle, I put my political career on the line, which I said on the Senate floor, by voting for the stimulus to save this country from sliding into a 1929 depression. Now, that was the breaking point. They had always called me a rhino, Republican in name only, and the Republican Party has moved so far to the right. They kicked Florida Governor Crisp out. Now, Bob Bennett in Utah with 90% conservative wasn't conservative enough for him. You have John McCain, the question as to whether he's sufficiently conservative to win a Republican primary in Arizona. So that that vote was a matter of principle. And it backed up what I had done consistently, as I have specified, by voting with the Democrats more often than with uh, uh, with Republicans. And uh, uh, Biden and Rendell and uh, the president uh, urged me to come back in and join the Obama team. And I cast the critical vote, 60th vote, to cut off the filibuster and pass a comprehensive health care insurance. So uh, uh, President Obama, Vice President Biden, Governor Rendell, the Democratic City Committee, State Committee, and uh, the AFL-CIO think I support democratic values, and uh, I'm taking my case to the people, and I'll abide by their verdict, Andrea. Well, you've got a, a more than 40-year career in politics. Uh, how worried are you after what happened to Senator Bob Bennett? Uh, I uh, am doing everything I can, Andrea. I'm exerting every ounce of my considerable vim, vigor, and vitality in this campaign. I'm not making any predictions. I'm just slugging it out. Um, we know you're a fighter. Thank you very much. Arlen Always a pleasure, Andrea. And coming up next is all forgiveness.